a loss may actually be a blessing in disguise for this West Virginia Mountaineers team, maybe more than any other. And I actually think this year's group makes that statement one Bob Huggins would agree with. This is another episode of Mike Drop here on Pittsburgh Sports Live. I am your host, Mike Oste. There it is. There's the nameplate and at Mike Oste 11 on Twitter. And this is a WVU Hoops Edition, Men's Hoops Edition here, brought to you by PSL and, of course, WV Sports Now, as WV Sports Now is the newest, although I keep saying it's the newest, that's the Twitter handle for PSL, PGH Sports Live there on Twitter. Here is what I was looking for. Here is WV Sports Now on Twitter, and I keep saying it's the new venture in the Now Network. It's still the newest site in terms of us being credentialed and what we're mainly doing here within the Now Network as we absorb what was a blog and taking them on, a a part of what we're doing here with Pitt and Penguins and Steelers, etc. here within the network in terms of our coverage. But it's not as new as it once was. It's been now a few months, certainly through most of the football season towards the tail end as they do unfortunately miss a bowl game. And then during their rebuilding year, so I didn't expect anything else. And you can go back through the channel for past shows on my take for WVU football and what this year was and the future of WVU football, but also now clearly now in basketball season. Find it there, WVU, WV, not WVU, it's more than just the Mountaineers, but WVSportsNow.com. And WVU men's team lost. They were 7-0 to start the year, and they had a win over Pitt. We did a Backyard Brawl preview show, wrap-up show, all through the channel here. Is of course, Pittsburgh Sports Live does have a lot of Pitt fan subscribers. But they had that win. They had a few other wins. The early season schedule hasn't been that difficult. And they end up losing a recent game in which was kind of a Big East throwback of sorts. And they lose that Big East throwback to St. John's, 70-68. to And a lot of Mountaineer fans blame the... This seems to be the trend for WU fans through the years, really. Maybe sports fans in general, but these are my people. Blaming the refs. And there were some bad calls in that game, for sure. There certainly were some bad calls in that game. But I'm not going to use the referees as an excuse. And I, Bob Huggins wouldn't either. You see there him yelling, you see there him pointing... That's Bob Huggins, but while he was mad during the game and defending his team and mad at the referees and jawing at them during the game, it was Treadmill City afterwards, as I'm sure he put his team through the treadmill all week, and it's been a while since that game now as we speak here. And the West Virginia Mountaineers blew a lead. W blew a significant lead in that game. They allowed St. John's to come back, and St. John's is an 8-2 and two team. They're around the same in record-wise, but nobody expected anything from St. John's. It's not like they're a powerhouse or a ranked team. This isn't like what it was in the 80s between these two teams in the old Big East days. And WU faces their first loss, 70-68. Now, since then, West Virginia is dealing with mostly Cupcake City. I mean, you're dealing with a schedule that was kind of like it was earlier in the year, except for the Pitt game. When you had Northern Colorado, you had Akron, you had Pitt, you had Boston University, etc. Which was State, which was a decent win. That's probably the most quality victory of the year based on who that program has been in recent years. But not necessarily who Wichita State is this year. Maybe Pitt as well, even though they've been an up-and-down program. But Austin, PV, Nichols State, which ends up getting a victory already over Pitt. So this would be another power five decent win they could have. WB beating Pitt, though, you feel like they're better than Pitt. Maybe should be able to handle them. But Nickel State is a team that can shoot the lights out. That's how they're able to beat Pitt. So if they can shoot with a decent percentage, they could take down West Virginia if WU is off in terms of shooting and doesn't get the boards that they're used to, or at least doesn't get it beyond Culver, who gets a double-double in that game. Against St. John's, 18 points, 12 boards. Not enough. Nobody else really did not enough around the glass as well and also didn't shoot enough. So that could be an issue, as I am recording this prior to that game. And then Youngstown State. But that all leads in to the main focus of the West Virginia schedule. 
Ohio State, the number three team in the country, follows it up a couple days later, getting you now into Big 12 play with Kansas, the number two team in the country, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, TCU, and we're getting down moving into Big 12 action, Texas not soon after, and another matchup with Texas Tech. And the Big 12 is not necessarily the ACC by any means here, but it's still a decent conference, and a conference that West Virginian basketball-wise, more so than football, has been heavily competitive in, has been in the Big 12 championship game multiple times, losing to, losing to Kansas then. But dealing with Kansas well in the regular season matchup, having an upset win over, over Kansas, being very competitive over the Jayhawks, who are not only a premier team in conference, but overall in college basketball, historically and in recent years, of course, that is a powerhouse program that gets all the recruits. And the press and what West Virginia does and Bob Huggins' style has provided a bit of a rough go, kind of a hassle of a game for Kansas in recent years especially. Now last year, it was an up-and-down season for the Mountaineers, missing the NCAA tournament, kind of a rebuilding year like this year for football was last year for WVU and basketball with the whole drama of Kanate, etc. Still, competitive and roughed up Kansas. So it kind of goes to show how that matchup's been. And that's coming up. So once we get towards the end of 2019, the end of the of the year, getting into the first of the year, 2020, that really will show what this Mountaineer team is and where they're going. And if they really could be a chance at an NCAA tournament team. If they could be a postseason berth that's more than just a mulligan, not even NIT appearance. If they could have a chance at the NCAA tournament, which maybe people thought would be a year away from this year, but based on their record so far, isn't out of the question. But again, that schedule hasn't been rough. And the St. John's game, while you want to beat St. John's and you feel like, okay, most Mountaineers are saying, well, we're maybe not a top 25 team, but we're better than St. John's. And St. John's is anything special. And you blow the lead there and you let them come back and the calls. And if you don't want to blame the referees, then it's just indictment of the program. It's just going to say that maybe W is not as good as many would have thought because they hadn't had a tough schedule. And then they go ahead and lose to St. John's, who you feel like maybe they should have been better than going into that game. However... Maybe, maybe that game is a blessing in disguise. Because really the focus here, and this is going to be a quick one here. I just want to get something up here on the channel before they really get into the snuff of that hard schedule. Obviously more analysis will come once you see who this Mountaineer team is. Because it is hard to gauge them right now. It is hard to gauge them. And you'll really know against Ohio State, see what they do there. But a lot of people, and Al and I talked about this actually on the Backyard Brawl preview. And Alan covering Pitt, and I was the WVU focus, and he kind of even said this from what he saw from the Mountaineers, that they're a pesky team. You may not think they're going to be an NCAA tournament team. They may not be a ranked team. They're young. They're very inexperienced. You don't kind of know what you're going to get. They're that four scum box of chocolates team. You're not really sure. And that will annoy Bob Huggins for sure. But they're a pesky team that if all things go right, and if they do fit into the Bob Huggins mode and do listen to him and and – and have things go well, which is maybe the ideal scenario, they could sneak up and get upsets over Ohio State. They could upset Kansas again. They could have that win over Texas, Texas Tech, etc. And have that really make them getting some quality wins, which you'll need for them to have a chance at that at, pop, at not having the bubble popped and, and getting it towards the NCAA tournament. Because much more than that is probably not going to happen for this team. You expect them to be more than that next year. Just getting in would be a big deal for this West Virginia team. But that's the schedule. So that's part of this show. That you don't you aren't gonna really know. And the schedule will tell you in about a week or so here, once you get after Christmas, on how good this Mountaineer team is. And if they get one of those several wins, even if they don't win that many games elsewhere, and they go five hundred, say in conference play or below five hundred, as long as their record ends up being above five hundred overall, and they have a quality win or so against either Kansas or Ohio State, one of those major upsets, that would truly help them get a chance at, at, at an NCAA tournament. Have that bubble not be popped. Have them even get on the bubble, which was not the case last year. They knew they weren't a tournament team well before the season ended. So the schedule's really getting tougher, but maybe that humble pie could be good. Maybe the Mountaineers, even though you don't want to lose to a team like St. John's, and I'm not going to let the referees be blamed, maybe Bob Huggins, and even kind of what he said to the media recently, I know in the past he's talked about how 
Losing's never good. I'm never going to say that losing is going to be a good thing for my team and teams shouldn't have to be motivated by losing and the humble pie and all of that. And that's coach speak and I'm not saying he doesn't believe it because it is true. You shouldn't have to lose to motivate yourself and be as good as you can be. But maybe, just maybe, this Mountaineer team, as young as they are, and Culver being the best player is still very, very young. He is still a young player right now. He had that double-double, but he's had his off games. It's been up and down. He, he was in Huggins' doghouse a week prior to that. And you go to Matthews and McCabe and McBride and McNeil, etc. This is a, a young Mountaineer team that hasn't really been here and done this before. So an NCAA tournament berth is almost a year ahead of schedule and will kind of be cheering on top of this Sunday. But maybe losing to St. John's is actually good because it maybe provided that tough week of practice. It was Treadmill City. Huggins runs you on those treadmills every day and you're almost better off not having practice. It's harder It's harder outside of the game. It's harder during practice than in the games a lot of the time in terms of how tough he runs you. So maybe that'll motivate this team. And Bob Huggins keeps talking about, and it was there, that the loss for West Virginia was an eye-opener. You can read about that there, wvsportsnow.com. That's we got Cody Nesper to, to kind of uh, pen them and, and cover them for us while we're busy with the other sites. That's true. And that's kind of his take there. And, that, that you know, I like that. That makes sense because West Virginia didn't have a tough schedule going in. That was maybe one of the best teams they played, even though they're not great of a team. WVU should have got the win. But record-wise and who they've been, okay, maybe that's the best game they've played. And they get a decent win over WVU, depending on how West Virginia's season progresses. If WVU gets up to Ohio State and Kansas, and they say maybe Shane Johns gets in the inter- in tournament based on beating the team that did that. Who knows? It's kind of the take of what we thought maybe Pitt could do if they would have been able to beat WVU, but it didn't happen. But that win for St. John's maybe actually will do what West Virginia needed because it's not so much just the emotional accord of the humble pie, but that will allow the Mountaineer team to maybe focus in and practice more. And we'll see how they play against weaker opponents coming up prior to Ohio State because you want to see them dominate those teams. At least dominate those teams on the glass. You never know about shooting. But Nickel State is that game that certainly could potentially circle it. That could be an issue based on how they played against Pitt, based on their shooting ability, and how that is West Virginia's bugaboo. That is their problem. A team that shoots the lights out could destroy the Mountaineers, could win in upset, in not upset, but in dominating fashion. And that would be an upset. It's a major program. Nickel State gets that win. But maybe the loss of St. John's just is a good thing. It, it works them in, in, through that. They have that tough schedule coming up after these, these games, after the holiday season, really right around the new year. And that's going to be indicative of the program and indicative of how they do this year and what they do in those games. And if those if they can get even competitive basketball and if they can get one of those being an upset and if they, if, how they do in those two to three weeks after January 1, 2020, that'll tell you whether they're getting the NCAA tournament, whether they have a chance of this being anything semblance of that positive direction for the rebuilding, or if it's more of the same of last year where, yes, it's young and they're a new system, but they're not going to go anywhere. You'll see. If they get the doors blown off in all those games, that's a concern. Maybe this was an eye-opener in terms of that's just how West Virginia is. They're just not that good. But maybe that loss, even though you don't want to lose, but you knew you weren't going to go undefeated, obviously. This isn't the Javon Carter, Deshaun Butler. It's not one of those years. They're not walking through that door. That can at least show you who you really are and slap them kind of in the face and say, hey... You know, this is St. John's did this. They're not that great. And move on throughout the season. But, of course, this always comes down to, it really just comes down to West Virginia in terms of if they can shoot enough and if they can dominate the glass. They have to dominate the glass. You have to be a Bob Huggins player to dominate the glass. Huggins is really implementing that on this year's team. It is really about rebounds. That Pat Riley basketball, he wants rebounds more than points for some of these players. And just scoring enough in a percentage to be able to get by and get these wins Get rebounds, get second chance score, then go to the press, try to hang on to those leads and get these wins, and maybe it'll propel you to at least the tournament on one of those being an upset, and maybe that humble pie will help propel you to a better rest of the season because the schedule gets really, really tough, and that then will be who this rear rear Mountaineer team is. It'll really show who they really are based on what they do after 
January 1. So kind of just in summary, that might have been a potential positive blessing in disguise a little bit here, but we're not going to know. You can see our cover, wvsportsnow.com. You can follow it here on Twitter, wvsportsnow on Twitter. Just nothing's going to be decided. You're not going to really know anything until you get into that meat of the schedule. And that will be after the holiday season, after Christmas, going into the first of the year. So then we'll see. I want to remind you to hit up our family of networks, of course. Pittsburgh Sports Now, Pittsburgh Hockey Now, Pittsburgh Soccer Now even, SteelersNow.com. Pittsburgh Sports Live, of course, the channel here that I run for the now family of networks, pghsportslive.com. Shows still go there, maybe not as many as before. Pittsburgh Sports Live on Facebook, PGH Sports Live there on Twitter. Follow us there and help uh, get these shows to you with that notification. But if you don't want to, make it easy. Just click on the subscribe button on the bottom of the video there, bottom of the video and that then will make it the easiest. Want to follow and be bothered by me on social media and anything or any of us? Just look subscribe. You get a notification. Well, there it is uh, for the '90s catchphrase, and that'll make it easy. But I'm excited for this Mountaineer team. There's a lot to look forward to. They're an interesting team, an entertaining team, even though they're also going to be a very, very frustrating team to watch. Culver's the clear best player if anyone's going to be to lead this team, based on what we've seen recently. Even though he was in the doghouse, but. A lot will be remained to be seen, and that Nickel State game could be an issue. But I'm not too mad. Mountaineer fans upset, upset at the refs. You didn't want to give up that game that early because tougher games are coming. That game may actually help you get one of those games, okay? Maybe not, but that's maybe the glass half full take, or at least trying to do it. We'll see.